So, ladies and gentlemen, recently I made a video. What was the name of the video? What everybody misses about Saturn in my OMG Astrology Secrets 324. Uh, I mean, this is the number of the playlist. Uh, number of the video, I mean, in the playlist. So, many of you have asked me later on, what about Rahu? Why only Saturn? So, let's replicate this video for Rahu. So, what everybody misses about Rahu? right so if you have not watched that video please go and watch all the other videos in the channel and if you like this video at the end please click the thumbs up and if you want a consultation from me regarding rahu ketu or any other planets or your overall horoscope you want a comprehensive analysis please go to my website down in the description section and yes god is there with you all the time just look to him and you will find him you must find him because today we are going to talk about rahu <laughs> no worries uh any planet we discuss uh we must find god somehow all right so in the saturn video what did i say what did i say i forgot <laughs> <laughs> Saturn teaches us to become humble. Saturn tells us uh, if we will be able to digest our success, right? So Saturn is a very interesting planet. He gives us success or he gives us uh, humiliation sometimes. But the interesting thing is he can also give us humiliation after giving success. That's what I said. So similarly, for Rahu, you have to understand. See, many times people, they do not understand what Rahu is. They say Rahu is a materialistic planet. Well, that is true. That is true to a large extent. Not some, to a large extent. Uh, but it's not completely true. So people think that all the materialistic things of this world, uh, they are represented by Rahu. Right? Like money or you know, like uh, physical enjoyment with the opposite sex or anything which looks very nice, anything which feels very nice, right? I mean, everybody knows illusion comes under Rahu, but people think that everything and anything and everything of uh, this material world is under Rahu. Well, actually not, right? Because, see, you have to understand, Rahu represents those desires or you could say those tendencies, right? Within you, me and everybody else, <laughs> which are beyond the sanction of the scriptures, right? Which the scriptures do not sanction or recommend us not to do. Either it prohibits us or recommends us not to do it, right? So those activities, those uh, things come under Rahu basically. So for example, if you talk of uh, money, for example, now money comes under which planet? Money comes under Jupiter, Mercury primarily, then Sun, right? These three planets control money, wealth, and name, fame, power, position, all this. But what kind of money does it represent? It represents money that you are earning through your talent, right? Um, then we have Venus. Venus represents commitment towards uh, your spouse, uh, one spouse at a time and uh, it shows you know good married life good or bad that's secondary but it shows uh, conjugal love it can show sexual union and physical intimacy and beauty and all this right so primarily mercury and venus represents materialistic things right and of course then we have you know the emotional side you know emotional happiness emotional comfort comfort of the mother comfort of the family which is represented by the moon right and the inspiration and the uh, positivity and the goal-orientedness of the sun gives us uh, hope in life, right? And then we have Saturn. Saturn represents things that we don't like. <laughs> but what does Rahu represent? Rahu, as I said, can be representing every aspect of the other planets. So, for example, Rahu can represent certain aspects of the sun. Now, what does sun represent? Sun represents uh, leadership, authority, power, position, right? The ability to manage people and the ability to manage resources. That's what the sun represents, right? But what can Rahu represent? Rahu can represent an ego which is bloated beyond, uh, beyond what it should be, right? 
that's what is rahu now i am not talking of sun rahu conjunction here but i am just trying to give you a perspective of what rahu represents when he's associated with every planet right so then when it comes to moon what what can rahu represent now moon in general can represent feeling good about oneself feeling good about others you know feeling good about society people in general being uh, being satisfied with oneself with one's life either it's good bad or as per our expectation or not or we may not be 100% satisfied but we are reasonably satisfied well so that we don't feel unhappy all the time you know but if moon and rahu are associated then it can show you know unhappiness abject rejection depression it can show uh, things which you want but you can't get it right it can show things that you know will never be yours but uh, you still want it it's like that you know it's like like that insatiable craving right so similarly if rahu and mercury if you see how rahu can uh, snatch away mercury right he can do it very well how does he do it he can uh, give you desires and temptations within you oh yes idhar paisa laga do saath saath din mein double ho jayega that you put money here in this uh, you know stock or in this uh, specific scheme or whatever or some relative calls you or some friend uh, actually enemy not friend but <laughs> but either ways so they call you and say oh the money is going to double in 7 days right so put it and then what happens after 7 days the rest is history right so that's what rahu and mercury can represent things which um, wealth which is earned by uh, not by righteous means right that that's what rahu and mercury can represent again i am giving a disclaimer i am not talking of rahu mercury conjunction here so do not write in the comments i have rahu mercury conjunction i don't do this well i am not talking of rahu mercury here all right because for a final thing to happen so if somebody um is depressed all the time all right so then does it mean that a person must have you know sun rahu or primarily moon rahu conjunction not necessarily the 8th house has to be spoiled the 6th house the 12th house the lagnesh has to be spoiled otherwise how can a person be in depression with just one conjunction but i'm trying to tell you how rahu can affect other planets right and then there's venus right so venus as i said venus in itself represents um, sexual desire and you know desire to because venus is the semen right he's shukra he wants to uh, propagate uh, populate this world right but the thing is venus also shows uh, because venus rules the sign of libra so venus uh, shows uh, connection that deep uh, connection that sense of bonding and partnership which you feel with your spouse that's what venus represents that can be uh, even on a financial level or even on a emotional level all, all right not necessarily only in in the physical level but venus represents a connection more venus represents that feeling which tells you that i am good by myself but i can be better if i am with somebody that that's what venus represents right now what does rahu represent if rahu is if you if you try to see how rahu can corrupt venus right so rahu can corrupt venus by uh, giving you tendency for extra marital affair right by being uh, by conducting uh, committing infidelity right so these are things by which rahu can uh, destroy your venus right and venus can also represent uh, fine dining and drinks and all this right but what can rahu do there rahu can bring alcohol rahu can bring drugs there right so venus may be Uh, mocktail word rahu is cocktail <laughs> so mocktail generally in my knowledge is without alcohol you can correct me i am not experienced in this domain but as far as i know cocktail is mocktail plus alcohol or, or something similar right so mocktail is venus cocktail is rahu right so that's how rahu corrupts uh, venus right and then we have rahu and saturn you know laziness or you know prone to doing things in ways that nobody likes right so that's what rahu represents so for example if you take venus for example 
many times people uh, they think that uh, venus is a very materialistic planet well of course venus is very materialistic venus is the root of all materialism actually but at the same time if you read these scriptures the scriptures clearly tell that if you want to stay with the opposite sex you are permitted to stay with it there's nothing wrong in staying but you can't stay like cats and dogs like animals as people stay in kaliuga you can't you you should not stay like that right what you should do is there is the pro, uh, there is the process of grihastha ashram where you and your uh, probable spouse go in front of the fire in front of agni devata who is a representative of lord vishnu himself and then in front of lord narayana you take vows that yes both of us will stay together for the rest of our life and we will help each other grow materially emotionally financially spiritually most important right now does venus represent grihastha ashram no not necessarily there are two kind of married lives one is grihastha and one other is griha medhi right so grihastha ashram is where you put god in the center within your married life that is grihastha ashram which is represented by jupiter and venus can represent grihastha ashram or primarily it can represent griha medhi ashram griha medhi means um, there is no focus on spirituality within the home i mean not necessarily it's not there at all but that's not their primary goal so if you want to distinguish a grihastha from a griha medhi a grihastha and a griha medhi will do the same things externally they will both go to the office they will earn money they will you know have children they will take care of parents everything is same but the primary difference is most primary difference is that their goal of life is different for a griha medhi the goal of life is you know just sexual enjoyment uh, going to tv uh, movies uh, watching tv and uh, yeah buying property buying land buying stocks buying this buying that you know? and then perish one day yes that's what grihamedi life is it's like the life of the animals right but grihastha life on the other hand is a god centric life where you do spiritual practices in the morning uh, with your spouse with your children with your parents and uh, you devote significant time of a year or a day or every day rather for spiritual practices right and uh, you have big deities you have the altar where you have you know god's uh, form and then you worship them there is puja there is archan there are like other sadhus coming into your house uh, you you are you give them donations and then they give you spiritual knowledge in return and when you are senior you also give knowledge right so now that's what is the difference but rahu can corrupt both right so how can rahu corrupt griha medhi griha medhi means like just just hovering around in the materialistic plane right with a spouse that's all that's griha medhi so as i said rahu can give temptations for yeah extramarital affair okay not happy with one spouse okay take another right or any kind of it can go to any extent how can rahu corrupt a grihastha right by pulling him down him or her down to a griha medhi right that's how a grihastha falls down right so similarly rahu can corrupt any other planet right rahu can create mars mars shows uh, our ability to get angry for the right reasons our ability to be bold courageous and confident for the right reasons but if rahu decides to corrupt mars what he will do is he will make you angry for the wrong reasons right in the name of being bold and daring he will make you do nonsense right so some uh, the other day somebody was telling me you know um somebody uh, posted uh, whatever you know there was some man or woman i i don't know the name but they posted you know some um exposing their own body parts right somebody posted this so somebody asked you know what is your opinion on this you know so i said uh, well uh, this is like going to the level of animals because you won't see animals wearing clothes right so either it's a man or a woman uh, we should not agitate each other's minds by wearing clothes or other by not wearing clothes right so therefore vedic culture advises people both men and women 
to dress decently, to dress modestly so that we do not agitate each other's minds, right? That's what is the essence behind the Vedic ethos of modest dressing. But in Kaliuga, what's happening is people are opening their clothes, right? So then this person told me that, oh, but you know, this uh, actor or actress who has done this, you know, they have, they have shown so much courage, you know. What about that courage and boldness that they have? So then I told them, see, courage is required to murder somebody also. Courage is required to kill somebody. To, to commit suicide also, you need courage, right? Have you seen those people who keep saying, oh, I will commit suicide, I will commit suicide, I will commit suicide. They don't commit sometimes. Most of the people who keep telling this, they don't commit. Because why? They don't have the courage. Now, is it good to have the courage to commit suicide or is it not? It's a very difficult question, right? But nonetheless, human life is precious. One should not waste their life by committing suicide, right? Because that does not stop the cycle of karma. It perpetuates you in the cycle of suffering. You know, you become a ghost after you commit suicide. You have a subtle body, but you don't have a gross body, right? So every every action requires boldness, you know. Wearing, wearing a modest clothes also requires boldness. Not wearing anything also requires boldness. But... That's how Rahu corrupts the intelligence, right? Rahu tells you that, oh, just be bold, you know, kuch bhi bol do. do anything and speak anywhere, any, anything to anywhere, anytime. You know, you are going to be bold and courageous, right? But well, that's nonsense, actually, because uh, Lord Krishna says in the Gita, right, what actually austerity of speech is. Anudvegam karam vakyam. That sloka is there. Let me see how many of you can write it down. You know. What are the characteristics of good speech? So, if Mars is good in the chart, then we can be vocal for the right reasons. But if Mars and Rahu, or as I said, not Mars Rahu conjunction, but somehow or the other, if Rahu spoils Mars, then you will see people going on doing nonsense in the name of being bold, right? Like Mars can show protection, right? So people think Mars shows violence. Not exactly. Mars actually shows opposite of violence. Mars shows protection basically because then that's why Mars can or should be very prominent in Kshatriyas, right? Kshatriyas are the kings basically. So the word Kshatriya means Kshatatrayate, one who frees you from heart and pain. That's what a Chatriya is. It said, whenever a Chatriya sees that somebody is crying, his blood boils. You know, that's like a Chatriya, right? Not like the Chatriyas of today. Anyways. So, the thing is, Mars wants to protect, right? That's what a soldier does. Soldier protects, right? But when Rahu corrupts Mars, what happens is, you do violence. Now, you may say, oh, but I don't have Mars-Rahu conjunction, but I still end up doing violence. So, if you associate with people who have prominent Rahu, right? Prominent Rahu doesn't mean Rahu in the Lagna, right? Many people think, oh, Rahu in Lagna, very prominent Rahu. See, uh, there are many ways you can identify. If, if a person has a very tamasic lifestyle, you know, the person gets up very late in the morning, you know, sleeps very late in the night. The person does not do any spiritual practice. The person is indulging with uh, members of the opposite sex recklessly, right? And if the person has no accountability for his actions, then, you know, the person is very having a very prominent Rahu. So, best is to pray for them, but from a distance, right? Uh, my Shiksha Guru used to say that when you see a snake, what happens? Rahu is the snake, right? Snake means... The literal snake or an anaconda or snake-like people. What do we do? Do we go and kill the snake? Well, not necessarily. Unless they are attacking us. But what we do is, we pray for them. But from a distance, right? We do not go and hug them. We do not go and embrace them, right? Because how much ever good we are, if we associate with them, we will be poisoned. And we uh, it will be very difficult for us, right? To um, have a good life. <laughs> so stay away from snakes, stay away from snake-like people, right? <laughs> so therefore, you have to understand, Rahu can impact every planet. So therefore, all these aspects of materialistic life are coming from these different planets, right? But what Rahu can do is, he can corrupt every 
every aspect of every planet. So therefore, these traits of a person, as I said, you know, very prominent Rahu. If you find such people, then best is to always uh, maintain distance from them. Because they, because see, association is uh, very contagious, as the scriptures say, right? Sanjat, Sanjayate, Kamat, Kamat, Prodho, Bijayate. This is what the Bhagavad Gita says, right? So, whatever you associate with that, that is what you become ultimately. So, if you associate with a person who is drinking alcohol, maybe once a month, once a week or whatever, you will also gain that frequency because a person will tell you, because a person who is affected by Rahu bloats up things in a way to convince himself. So if you meet a person who drinks, he will most likely 99.9% .9 or rather a thousand percent tell you, Are, take it once, man. If you drink once, nothing happens. Well, but the question is, the person who is saying this, he was also the person who was doing violence, right? The same is with uh, people who eat meat. That's like a perverted Mars. Instead of protecting animals, you're going on ramp, uh, going on killing animals, right? So that's like uh, the perverted form of Mars where you are torturing others, you are killing others and you are like enjoying the flesh, right? So that's barbaric and that's vehemently condemned in the scriptures and the scriptures advise us to not do it because that has severe karmic consequences because we don't we will not like it if somebody does that to us, right? The way animals are slaughtered in slaughterhouses or even in homes, right? So therefore, we have to understand that we should not associate with the person who has a prominent Rahu. Otherwise, we are going to be the next in the list, all right? But the question is, how do you not associate with Rahu? The, because most of the people are afflicted by Rahu very badly. Right? So, what do you do? How do you protect yourself from Rahu? How, how, how? That's the question. Because just by not associating with Rahu, it doesn't mean that you will be able to protect yourself. Right? But what you have to do instead is you have to start associating with people who are cultivating spiritual wisdom and knowledge and spiritual habits in their life on a daily basis. Right? Because when you do that, what happens is you inculcate some of their habits. So if they, if you have somebody, some friend or some relative or some neighbor or some colleague in your company, because most of the people, either they will be a family member, your relative, your friend or your colleague, right? Or your neighbor at maximum, these five or maybe acquaintances, right? All these six. So among these six categories, if you know anybody, if you have heard about anybody, that yes, uh, this person is doing some spiritual practices or this person visits a particular uh, satsang program, goes to this particular uh, place within my city, within my town or within my country or within my state, then please, for the sake of the heavens, please contact them and be in their association. That, that will keep you away from people who have prominent Rahu automatically. So... On one side, you have to distance yourself from people who are involved with Rahu-related activities, right? And on the other hand, as I said, that itself is not enough. That's very temporary. Every time you keep saying, no, 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 I won't do this, I won't do that, it's not going to work, right? So if somebody tells you, oh, let's go and watch a film, and you say, oh, no, no, I, I will not waste my time. But then the question is, what do you do if you don't watch the film, right? So you have to do something positive. You have to have some uh, spiritual engagements. You know, you read the Bhagavad Gita or you make a video on, you know, any shloka of the Bhagavad Gita. You cultivate people. You do some uh, worship of the Lord. You know, you do some, this archan, right? You offer something, you know, patram pushpam phalam toyam yome bhaktya prayachati tadaham bhakti uparitam asna mi priyatatmanaha. Yes, Lord Krishna says, right? If you offer me a leaf or even water with love and devotion. Right? I accept it. So therefore, please understand that just by saying no, it it's not going to work. Right. So say no to Rahu related activities and say yes to spiritual activities. Only then 
and when you do this then you will realize even your material life will go very smooth so imagine uh, if you have a very good discipline you know spiritual practice you know then your health will also be good because you will you know in the right kind of things you know you will not lose your mind right your relationships will be good because you will not shout at people you know for unnecessary reasons you will not cheat people you will not you will not do nonsense you know you will not do something which you regret later so if you do spiritual practices spiritually you will elevate yourself but even before that you will be elevated materially you will have very good success you will have good respect in society you will have good connections you know you will be able to get things done easily now of course i am not saying that do spiritual practices with these motivations but these are by products of having a good spiritual uh, culture in your home that you can even succeed materially and that is why in the scriptures we have you know dharma artha kama moksha right but if you focus only on kama without dharma then that is like neither you get dharma neither artha neither kama neither moksha nothing so first focus on dharma then artha then kama then moksha right so don't don't dismiss any one of them in the name of the other all right and mostly people disassociate dharma and then they go after you know artha and kama so that that will lead to disaster right so please do not do that so first do dharma first do spiritual practices and then do everything else all right thank you very much for your patience if you like this video please click the thumbs up and share it with somebody who you feel is inquisitive spiritually all right god is there with you all the time you will find him definitely just when you look to him and if you want a consultation please go to my website down in the description section and if you have not yet subscribed please subscribe <laughs> thank you